Hi, I am going to show you in this video um, how to use the inverted layer mask. Um, we've already talked about layer masks, you've used layer adjustments, um, but what I'm going to show you now is how you can control it yourself, do something underneath, mask it out, and then slowly paint up what you want. Um, so in this one, what we're going to do is I'm going to show you how, and well, let's, let's start right here. Um, Angelina does not need to be photoshopped, I know, but I thought if I'm going to be working on an image and I have to stare at it while I'm working, it might as well be of something lovely. And she is, so here she is, but I thought, you know, we could kind of come in and, you know, soften up some of the pores and, and that kind of thing. And just to give you an idea how to use a few tools in here. So the first thing I'm going to do is hit Command J to duplicate my layer and just go ahead and turn the original off. But then I wanted to introduce to you this tool right here called the Clone Stamp Tool. And it's a little tool that you can use to help get rid of blemishes, freckles, things like that on the face. As you can see in this video, what it's doing is it's taking image, it's taking photos basically of some of the parts of the image and then you're able to kind of reproduce that within the image. Um, but I'm going to use it in this way. And so I guess so we can come up here and kind of take samples of the skin that's already there and then kind of paint back on top of it. Um, so what I'm going to do is if you go up here, you can see that um, we have the opacity of 100, a flow of 50. Let me put the opacity down to 50%. And so remember the shortcut to that is instead of coming here and dropping down and trying to scale it and find 50%, you know, I don't have time for that. Um, so what I'm gonna do is just hit five and it'll take me to 50. If I wanna do 20, I hit two and it takes me to 20, eight, 80, so on. And if you wanna go back to 100, you just hit zero and there we are. So I want to be at 50, so I'm going to hit 5, and there we are. Now the same thing happens over here for the shortcut. The only difference is instead of just hitting the number, hit the shift key while you do it, and it'll change the flow. So let's say if I wanted my flow to be 70, I would hit shift 7, or 80, shift 8. If I wanted my flow to be 20% and not putting a lot of pigment out first um, as I put it down on my... Um, on my digital canvas, then I would hit shift two and have a 20. But let's go back to 50, so I'm gonna hit shift five and I've got a 50-50 opacity and flow. Start there, see what happens, you can always change it. So then what I'm gonna do is, we've got the option of different brushes that you're using here. Um, I'm just gonna do soft round and that should be the default anyway. So what I'm gonna do is you're gonna see, with this tool, I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna take a photo, basically. So if I hold the Alt key, look what happens. This happens, and so while you're holding the Alt key in this, click, and what this does is it takes a photo of the flesh wherever you want it to, and I'm slowly building it up. Remember, I'm on 50-50, so I'm clicking. I'm gonna click and drag here, click and drag here, and I've painted that out. Pretty awesome, huh? And then same thing here, I'm gonna click, get a sample, and then kind of paint over as well. And then you can sample from anywhere that you need to. And if you need to make the brush smaller, if it's sampling too much, just use your bracket key, just like you've always done to make the brush, whether you're in your brush tool or if you're an eraser tool or whether you're now in a clone stamp. Um, is there anything else maybe over here? Once again, I know this seems really crazy that even Angelina is the uh, option that in this one, but um, you're gonna see a little bit of a difference. And just to show you how it can be very subtle, um, this can get rid of freckles, anything like that as well. So that's something, if you wanted to do that first, if you wanted to get rid of, like I said, any moles or uh, freckles or anything like that, you could use that tool. But now that we've used that tool, what I'm gonna do is hit V, just take us back to the Move tool. Um, I'm going to duplicate that layer now. I've got the clone stamp part done. So I'm going to hit Command J. And then now what we're going to do is we're going to go up to the filter. And then from filter you drop down and you hit blur and then there are many options, I know. Um, and two, and we'll go through these, you know, um, as we start, you know, getting further and further into Photoshop. But the Gaussian or the surface blur would be two that I would use for something like this. Um, and so what I'm going to do is hit surface blur. And it's intense and it's meant to be. And here you can change the radius down if you would like. You can bring it back up. So play around with your radius and threshold and get it to where 
you feel it's something you can work with and just think of it don't think of it in terms of the outside edges think of it in terms of being able to kind of soften the skin I just want the skin part um, that's what I'm going to focus on so let's say I'm okay with that I hit okay now what I'm going to do is add a mask but this time like I said I'm going to use an inverted one I'm going to darken out the image um, and then I'm going to be able to go in it and slowly paint this blurred Angelina out on top of the original Angelina and we'll see what happens to her skin there. So if you hold the alt key while you click on the layer mask, look what happens. So there we are. So now what I'm going to do is try to paint out some of that blurred skin from underneath there and this way I control it and you do that using your brush tool. So hit B and that'll take you right over here to your brush tool. We're at 100 and 100, and I do not want to come in at this at 100 and 100. Watch what happens. And I'm going to use my bracket to do this. I come in and start painting this out, and I mean, it just really, because we know what's underneath, right? So, I mean, all of a sudden, any edge has been blurred out, um, and there's not a sense of believability whatsoever to this. So, Command Z. Um, and then what I'm going to do now is I'm going to start with like a 2020. And so I'm going to hit 2 and shift 2 for the flow. And then I'm going to zoom in, hit Z, and then kind of move towards the right. Back to my brush tool, which is the B. And let me grab my pen. I was just using my um, mouse or my little tablet. So I'm going to grab my Wacom pen. And I'm going to start painting this out very slowly. And this way, as you can see, you can still keep the believability of the flesh, but you're just softening it. And that's because we've dropped it down so low that, you know, we're not painting out every single pore immediately. And what this can do is just help soften. Also, too, I don't want to hit anything that has an edge because I want to keep the edges nice and crisp as we go through this. And then make my brush larger if I wanted to and I can continue to paint out and then this way like I said I have control over this then I can come in over here make my brush a little smaller these little wrinkles under her eye I am not going to take them away completely but I'm going to soften those here we go oh yes if we only had this in the mirror in the morning huh but um here we go you know, and you can think about this as a primer. You know how you prime your face so you can uh, soften your pores? This is kind of what this does in Photoshop. Um, and I'm going to work my way around. And let me see. Do this. Let me zoom out just a little as well. And so you're starting to see the difference of what's happening here and here. So if I turn it off, you can already see what's starting to happen. So what I'm going to do is continue to work, pause the video while I do, and then once I get her face done, I'll come back. That way you don't have to watch me um, complete the entire face, okay? Okay, so I've gone through and I've softened her face, and I'm back um, just by using my brush and slowly, slowly, um, like I said, mine ended up being at 30% and 20, pulling out that blurred layer from underneath, being able to control how much I'm pulling out, and then see the effect that you get. And to see the effect, here is the before, and then when I turn the eye back on. So you can just see how, most importantly, it not softened, but it got rid of some of the pores and the shine on her face. So that's one way you can use this inverted layer mask on skin, just to kind of freshen it up. Um, also, too, I'll show you how you could even change her eye color. So what I'm going to do is go back to this layer here, original, and I'm going to duplicate it again. And then this time what I'm going to do is maybe play around with, why don't I just start playing around with something here um, and see if any of these blending modes might do something I like. Um, let's see. And like I said, I don't, I don't know. I'm just, I'm just playing and let's see, color dodging. And the screen. I already tried vivid light. Let's see. And light. No, I'm not finding anything in here that I would like. So, what I'm going to do is 
maybe um, do something like that but maybe I'll brighten that and then go up to my image and I'm not going to worry about doing a layer mask or the a layer adjustment on this one because I've duplicated it and I'm just trying to find out something that I want to use for her eye so you can find when you go to image adjustments you can go to hue saturation right here and you can play around with it and I'm only paying attention to what's happening with her eyes because that's what I'm wanting to focus on um, let me see if I can get something through here hit OK and then maybe image adjustments let me do a color balance and play around and I'm just watching what her eye color is doing I, could care, I don't care about anything else so let's brighten that green yeah let's give her something like that and I'm gonna say okay now obviously it's done everything that we can see where I've kind of painted out too so you can see what's happened here with the layer mask so I'm gonna put another inverted layer mask on top of that so to do that same thing I'm gonna hold the alt key hit the layer mask icon right down here next to FX and then that goes away then I'm gonna zoom in so I can see what I'm doing right on her eye I'm going to go to my brush tool, hit B. Obviously, it's way too big for this. So I'm going to hit my bracket key, and I'm going to zoom out just a little. Um, so I'm going to get rid of those pixels. And so now what I'm going to do is slowly start painting that underneath color through. Um, I'm going to take this back down to 20, and I'm just going to start right here and see what's starting to happen. And you can control this just by painting out just what's happening in the center. I'm trying to I'm gonna kind of keep the the dark that I like on the edge through here. And then I'm gonna come over here. And paint out some more here. And like I said, you know it seems like you're you just keep painting and painting and painting over it. But this way you have control. And when it starts looking too fake you know, you, you can stop, um, but you have the control over it. But let's say, yeah, let, let me just go crazy right here for a second and just do this and do this and do this. And so let's say, okay, that got a little out of control right there. The way you can make it reverse is, I mean, before when our select, we would just use the alt key. We can't use the alt key in the paintbrush because it gives us the eyedropper. All you do is you come down here and you just reverse white and black. So what I'm doing right now, I have white as the foreground color and I'm painting out it acts kind of as an eraser. I'm painting out what's underneath. If I painted too much out, then just hit this little arrow right here and I switch the foreground and background. So the black is allowing me to go back and put it back in and cover it back up. And so if you do paint out too much or you feel like it, you can reverse these right over here very easily between white being the foreground and black being the foreground and thinking about it as white is erasing it out and if you put too much, black is going back and it's helping you cover it back up. So let's say this is what I want. I'm going to hit Command-0. And then you can check the eye, again, by turning them on and off. And you can see the brightness that we brought in here. And then maybe now I might want to go back to my hue saturation. And it's not going to let me because I'm on my layer mask. So make certain you click on the actual photo. And what this lock here it has these two connected so if you ever wanted to get rid of the layer mask um, you can click this link and unlink them then click on this one and take it to the trash um, but I don't need that right now but just to kind of explain to you what that is uh, we'll talk about that obviously more too as we go through um, and get more in depth with Photoshop so I'm going to click on that and then come up here adjustments hue saturation now her eyes are painted out exactly the way I want them and now maybe I want to play around with the color in these. You can. And you can get the saturation a little higher. Maybe I wanted to do something like this. Brighten them up a little. And this is how you can play with eye color. Oh, give it a nice kind of purple tinge to them. Let me do something like that. Um, and then I hit OK. So then what you can see, and you can see how this just keeps changing because I'm messing with that, but this layer mask is keeping everything except for what I painted out um, hidden. 
So then if I could turn this off, you can see her eye color. And so that is a way to use the inverted layer mask to actually control um, how much and what you paint out into another image. So, all right, bye.